And so due to the time that we have left, we only have about 10 minutes, but we wanna to introduce to you Dr. Daniel Soto, a professor at Sonoma State University, and as I keep saying it, future Dr. Laura Diaz, who's already the director, um, executive director of the Educator Collective for Environmental Justice, ECEJ.org. Welcome to both of you here to the show, Líderes del Futuro. And again, can you tell us about the work that you're doing in Roseland, whomever wants to get started? Dr. Soto, you should go first this time. <laughs> <laughs> so we are interested in um, simultaneously deepening our understanding of the environmental issues occurring in Roseland, how they affect the community, but also in giving the community tools to conduct their own investigations into the areas, um, into what's going on in their communities, and to follow their instincts about problems they may have seen or known about already. So that is um, sort of the primary objective. And to do that, we're just taking our knowledge about techniques in the environment and techniques about gathering data and then providing participatory workshops where we can get folks in the community um, working alongside us and leading us to the problems where our particular expertise may be of most value. Well, then let me change the, the question for uh, Laura, and that is, what is the problem that we have in Roseland? Um, what we know is poor people live in areas where they're not, where nobody else wants to live. So why should we care about Roseland? Well, okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so unfortunately, California um, has a huge pollution disparity and problem. Um, and so the most vulnerable communities tend to be the hardest hit by pollution exposure and the opposite is seen in more affluent white communities. And California has even used their own like extensive data to um, identify communities that are most impacted by pollution and they're called and I didn't I'm like not a fan of this language, but they're called disadvantaged communities. And so um, Roseland is actually one of the California disadvantaged communities as per Cal EPA defines. Um, and so like every community that's over polluted has its own like issue, its own history and its own pollution problem with their own associated health outcome problems that can range from asthma, heart disease, diabetes um, and more, but in Roseland, and again, like we're really partnering with the community to, there is a lot of data that's out there that can help us kind of ground ourselves before we like go into the community. But like what's out right now and what we've learned and researched so far is um, there's an issue of um, disproportionate diesel pollution exposure, particulate matter. And then because Roseland is kind of trapped between 101, 12, farms and then some in it like industrial including um like i think there's a landfill um and maybe like where they process uh garbage um so it's just all of those like accumulate and have different kind of chemistries that happen in the air um but they all play a role in in this um unfair unjust pollution burden that's happening to a vulnerable population um, of Sonoma County. And so you, so Dr. Soto, you are at Sonoma States. What attracted you to look into Roseland? I mean, the, we, so I was looking for a way to make impacts on the local community. Uh, the university, um, our university, Sonoma State, is charged with um, providing benefits to the, our surrounding area. And so um, it when I 
first came to campus, other campus leaders said, if you want to get involved in local communities that could use the support to the university, Roseland is one of the places you should be looking at. And so I learned more about Roseland um, through the Cal EnviroScreen data set um, that uh, Laura had um, pointed out to me several years ago and started to understand the sort of multiple environmental threats that this community was under. And then um, Laura and I uh, had a conversation about a year and a half ago and realized that uh, Sonoma County, excuse me, that Sonoma State had a small grant that would allow us to get some funding for some monitors. And we said, okay, well, let's write a proposal about this community, the air quality concerns, and the things that we can do as a university to uh, bring benefits to this part of the community. And that is that was the beginning. And then since then, um, we have sort of, we have continued to grow the idea and then really, but also added the partnership with the community at the center of the project. A lot of people we know from researchers and research in general, that a lot of the time universities will do research, they will publish it, and then it goes into a file somewhere, never to be seen really by the community that they that was investigated or look into whatever way you want to uh, see it. Why is it, Laura, what is, why is it important that there be an open and transparent collaboration with the people of Rosal? Uh, yeah, so I think that speaks to like a, a huge issue that um, I'm seeing, learning and getting angry about on a daily basis. <laughs> um, I think uh, because it's another layer of oppression, right, which we don't need. <laughs> um, but I think that's something that both Dr. Soto and I are extremely passionate about. Um, and I come I'm come into my studies now after over a decade of teaching high school and and also being from a frontline environmental justice community like my I don't care about publishing papers but I do which I will be doing but or am and am doing but what's like the most important is um yeah accessibility like is the community actually engaging with the information that we're able to obtain right and not only that like I think more importantly which what Dr. Soto was getting to is are they driving the questions that we seek to answer, right? Like they should be telling us what the concern is, right? We can, we can, and, and it's just like really, um, I don't know, I just feel, I feel so lucky because it's this like beautiful dance when you get it right, right? Like we come in with some information and resources that maybe they haven't seen before. And with that information, then they can synthesize like a new set of problems that they're learning, which they bounce back to us, which then we can find more resources to an help answer those questions. You know what I mean? So it just becomes like really beautiful, like back and forth. Um, and I think we're kind of just at the beginning of that. Um, but like, I just approaching it with like humility and gratitude is super important and unfortunately not commonplace in these um, academic institutions. And that was my next comment that I was going to make <laughs> that a lot of the time is this quote unquote experts who are coming to save the community, right? Rather than collaborate with the community. Are you all seeing any real interest from the community of Roseland? And if so, uh, are we talking about the youth of today? Are we talking about uh, or older individuals? What are you seeing? Um, we've done so two workshops so far uh, with youth organizations. We did Academia del Pueblo uh, in the summer, and then we uh, met with uh, uh, Latin T Latino Student Congress, Latinx Student Congress, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And we see, we definitely saw interest from the students, and these are sort of high school uh, age students. Um, and we also saw interest from other community leaders, teachers, uh, mm -hmm. organizers, uh, and yes, and then, um, so we think that there is a lot of collaboration to be done 
uh, between us. And we just sort of look forward to deepening these partnerships, to earning the trust of the community, to providing values, to, you know, providing some value to the community. Um, and then again, engaging in that sort of back and forth where we're able to, to take their knowledge, apply our knowledge, to bring back knowledge, and then to have this back and forth that really allows us to make progress. And, um, and then, but, okay, so yeah, that's, I think that's should finish my thought, but uh, that's, um, mm -hmm. that's really what we are looking to do. And we are um, very excited by the interest we're seeing in the community. Definitely. And again, there's a lot of issues of contamination that perhaps most of the people of Roseland don't even know that they're living under these conditions. And one of the things that um, Laura mentioned previously um, is that the government knows the conditions these individuals are living under but there is no effort to one, educate, it, educate the community, and two, empower them to create the change that is necessary. And I'm glad that both of you are doing this work. And because of time, again, we our intention today was just to introduce you to the community mm -hmm. uh, and the research that you're doing. Uh, but could you both provide us with either an email address or a website, um, where people can get more information and perhaps collaborate with you, whether they want to be part of it, especially the youth. For me, the youth are just um, the ones that can drive the change, really. Mm -hmm. So where can people communicate with you? Um, so for me, so my nonprofit website is um, www.ecej.org. And then... Um, uh, you can also email us at the collective at ecej.org. Again, that is the website is ecej.org, and their email address is that collective at ecej.org. And that's for Laura Diaz, a future uh, professor, researcher. Uh, who's studying over there at Berkeley. And for you, uh, Dr. Soto? Yes, my email at Sonoma State is Soto D, S O T O D, at Sonoma.edu. Definitely. Again, that is Soto D for Daniel at Sonoma.edu. And again, I want to thank both of you for taking the time being with us. This is just the beginning of a conversation. I want you to know that you can come back as many times as you would like to, provide us updates, invite people to events. Uh, I, at some point, we really need to find a space in Roseland where whatever research you're getting, you're able to provide it to the larger community, whether it is at a place of worship, whether it is at a school, whatever. And slowly, there will be much more interest. But I wanna thank you both for your dedication and. You know, I've always said, and this will be probably my last comment, but I've always said that a lot of educational institutions, especially universities, see themselves as ivory towers of knowledge where people come to them to get educated. And it's wonderful to see uh, Dr. Daniel Soto live the ivory tower and come into this space and really work with the community. Um, and I know that for my other colleagues at Sonoma State, that may be an insult. Um, and I welcome them to join me here on the radio. And let's have a conversation. Because, and, and I'll say this, when Andy Lopez was killed, mm -hmm. let me rephrase my, my, my words, when Andy Lopez was lynched by an employee of Sonoma County Sheriff's, I was here on my simple radio show, Líderes del Futuro, and I call out the names of all of the faculty members at Sonoma State. And I said, you need to leave Sonoma State and come out here to the streets and join the youth and empower them. And I'm not gonna say their names at this moment out of respect, 
and not a single one of them came to educate and empower the community. So to see Dr. Daniel Soto and to see um, Laura Diaz here doing this work, it's a wonderful thing. And I, you know, I, I'm just grateful that you're doing this. And, you know, again, come back as many times as you would like to be here and let's collaborate. Let's make sure that our communities learn about the damage that is being caused to their bodies and how we can uh, make a change. So thank you both for taking the time and being with us here at Leaders del Futuro. Mm, thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation.